Hello, how are you? In this presentation, the, uh, the Messiah's Course for All Humanity, we'll look at there's a model course that God has shown for all humanity to follow. He showed it through the prophets. So we'll look at the prophets like Moses, Jacob, Joseph, and many others a bit later on. But first of all, it's very important to understand uh, the Messiah's Course for All Humanity. The first thing we need to do what God needs to do, because we fell from our status at the very beginning, or well, one, with, one with God, but we fell under satanic dominion. So we need to go through a course we separate from Satan. That's why Jesus said in John 8:44, you have your father the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. So our will, human will and desire, become closer to Satan's. So therefore we need to separate from that. Also we need to restore our dominion over Satan. Originally as children of God we were, had dominion over the angels as Paul said in 1 Corinthians 6.3 Do you not know that we are to judge the angels? So we have to restore our dominion. We fell under the dominion of Satan, Jesus of the Fall and remain so ever since. It's for this reason we find it very difficult to function properly on this earth. So we need to restore dominion over Satan. God reveals the model course to separate from and restore dominion over Satan. We lost our freedom and died spiritually at the time of the fall of Adam and Eve. So we need to look at it briefly. At the time of the fall, the serpent was the one who caused the fall. But we know from Revelations 12.9 that this serpent symbolized Satan and um, it refers to him as a leader of angels and his angels are thrown down with him so this being was a leader of angels became known as Satan to so remain under a dominion ever since we died spiritually so for this reason we could not function properly as God's children on the earth because we lost our status so in history we have to go through trials against Satan Jacob, in Genesis 32, 25 to 28, says he wrestled with an angel all night until he overcame the angel. That the angel uh, symbolized Satan. Joseph, he struggled against Potiphar's wife, where Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him in Genesis 39, 10 to 18. But he overcame that temptation. And this was the very temptation that the, of the fall, the sexual temptation that Satan appeared through Potiphar's wife. He had to overcome that at the cost of his life. Moses had to go through a trial where God sought to kill him within Exodus 4.24. And Jesus, he had to overcome a trial against Satan directly through the three temptations where Satan tried to destroy Jesus. We see in Matthew 4.1-11. Also, we have to we go through a course to subjugate Satan by loving our enemies. Jacob loved Esau. Esau sought to kill Jacob when he took his birthright. So even after 21 years, uh, Esau still wanted to kill him when he fled to Iran. But Jacob, inspired by God, loved, loved Esau. He managed to love his enemy. And because of this, he could restore that barrier, overcome that barrier after so long. Joseph loved his enemies, brothers. His brothers sold him as a slave. But even after such a long period of time, Joseph would have a lot of good reason to be resentful, but he loved his brothers. And he, Moses loved the Israelites when he led the Israelites through the blessed land of Canaan. They were very difficult people at that time. They wanted to rebel against him, to even kill him many points in time, but he loved them throughout. Jesus loved his enemies. He taught us to love our enemies. He loved Israel and he loved, of course, all humanity. Loving the enemy is important to be able to subjugate Satan because when you love your enemy, you go to a place where Satan cannot be you go beyond Satan at that stage. 
was that Jacob buried idols under a tree. Idols symbolized Satan, Genesis 35, 4. Moses burned a golden calf, Exodus 32, 20. And Jesus substantially subjugates Satan in Matthew 4, 1 to 11, at the time of the three temptations. We'll look at them a bit in more detail a bit later. Now, age is with reference to responsibility. Now, from the period of time from Abraham to Jesus, this is where God takes direct responsibility as the creator of human beings. So he makes Satan submit through this. But he does it through the prophets. So the prophets don't do it themselves, but God does it through them. So God defeats Satan and reveals a way for the Messiah to follow. Now when the Messiah came from Jesus to the second coming of Christ, Jesus and the Holy Spirit defeat Satan spiritually, but due to being rejected and crucified, no one followed Jesus' course. However, the foundation for the second coming was laid. So after the second coming of Christ, the second coming of Christ will defeat Satan spiritually, and this time believers will follow his course, and they will separate from and subjugate Satan. So at the time of Jesus, although Jesus did subjugate Satan, nobody understood or <coughs> believed that Jesus was a Messiah, so no one followed the same course. And for the last 2,000 years we've been waiting for the second coming. But the course we must follow is the same course as a Messiah. We have to follow the formula, what he shows us to do, so we also can separate from Satan and become true children. That's why it's important to understand our original status. What was our original status you know, before the fall? Well, before the fall of sinners, we didn't quite reach perfection, but it's important to understand where we were and where we need to go. We can find this from several uh, passages. Matthew 5.48, where Jesus said, Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Our value is as perfect as God, if we're one with God. Jesus often referred to himself as being one with the Father. In this passage in John 14.20, he said, On that day you will, all, you will know that I, my Father, and you in me, and I in you. In other words, in that day you also will be one with God, one with the Father. John 1, 12 But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. And 1 Corinthians 6, 3 Do you not know that we are to judge the angels to say nothing of ordinary matters? Because that's our original position, as higher than the angels. Due to the fall, we fell into a position lower and the angels. Root now of Moses' course. Moses, the foundation for Moses' course with Jacob, he realized a family level foundation for Messiah. Now, God said to Abraham, because of his, the failure in his offering, that 400 years would have to pass. But Joseph, which, which occurred in Egypt, 400 years. Joseph first went into Egypt. Now Joseph is a very significant person. Joseph, he was sold as a slave and he was, as I mentioned earlier, Potiphar's wife was attracted to him and tried to seduce him. But he overcame this temptation. He rejected her. But then uh, she accused her husband and many others that he tried to seduce her. So he was imprisoned in the lowest position. A slave trying to uh, seduce a master's wife is a sentence to death, for sure. But in the prison, because he overcome that sexual temptation, he did the opposite of what Adam and Eve did. That is sex sexual temptation, and they fell from a high position to a lower position. <coughs> Many other central persons. King David fell from when he uh, had a sexual relationship with uh, Bathsheba's wife, adultery. He fell from a high position to a lower position. 
and God could never work with him again in that way. Now Joseph did the opposite. He fell from a low position, went to a high position, because when he overcame the sexual temptation, uh, God could bless him. Even though he's in a, the worst possible place, God could take him out and put him in the highest position. In that highest position, we say prime minister, but he was second only to Pharaoh. That's very important because then later, 400 years later, the next central person was Moses. Now Moses, he was born among very humble people, but he was miraculously taken out and raised up in the palace. So he had the same position like Joseph had 400 years earlier. But there was that merit, those conditions on God's side that God's central person can be in that position. Now the foundation of faith in this course, the central person of course was Moses, the condition was life in the palace for 40 years, which is in Acts 7.23. We might, you might not think it's not that difficult to live in a palace for 40 years, but think of it. He received an education from his mother, and from this he would know he was really a Hebrew. He sees his people suffering every day, and he has to keep purity in his most difficult uh, surroundings, very sinful place the palace was at that time. And so he endured this time, and toward the end of this time he succeeded in the foundation of faith. But the next point is the foundation of substance should be realized. And this is to do with the Israelites in the Cain position to unite and follow Moses. It shows in the Bible that one day Noah, Moses was walking around, he saw an Egyptian beating an Israelite slave, and then it says that Moses killed the Egyptian. It's difficult to know the circumstance, maybe he saved his life. But the next, the next day, uh, two Israelite slaves were fighting, and Moses tried to break up the fight, but one of the uh, Israelites said to Moses, are you going to kill me like you killed the Egyptian? And so they badly publicized <coughs> what Moses did. And uh, because of this, they didn't trust Moses. So Moses had to flee into the wilderness for 40 years. Because to kill an uh, Israelite slave is not a crime in those times. But to kill an Egyptian was murder. And so he fled into Midian. The foundation of substance failed. So the second course means Moses lived again in the wilderness for 40 years. We find this in Exodus 7.7. 7. But this time he lived with a very humble shepherd. At the end of this time, God appeared to him in a burning bush and asked him to go back to deliver his people. Of course, Moses was quite reluctant at that time, but God uh, encouraged him with miracles and signs, and so he went back. So the foundation of faith was successful. The foundation of substance, Moses has to lead the Israelites out of Egypt into Canaan. So at first it was successful. They're on their way through the, the desert towards Canaan. But God is, really, God is concerned that they might lose faith again and everything will be lost. So God wanted an object of faith that they can always keep. See, even if everyone loses faith, at least one or two people believe in this object, they can continue. And this object of faith was going to be the tabernacle. And the tabernacle is a symbolic messiah. So if it's a symbolic Messiah, there must be a foundation for this object. It's for this reason that Moses fasted for 40 days in Mount Sinai. So the foundation of faith was, was successful. But when he came down from the mountain, he found the people worshipping a golden calf. It means that they lost faith. Uh, Satan invaded. Therefore, Moses had to fast again for another 40 days. 
But this time when he came down, the, the Israelites, they kept faith, they united with him, and they even built the tabernacle and so on. So let's look at the contents of what happened in Mount Sinai in this 40 days. The tablets of stone, they, sig they uh, symbolize, we know from 1 Corinthians 10.4, the rock was Christ. Revelations 2.17 says, Christ is the white stone. So these symbolized the two stones with the words written on them, symbolized the restored Adam and the restored Eve or Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus was referred to once uh, in John 1.14 as the Word made flesh. Now the tabernacle, as I mentioned, symbolizes the Messiah. It's a symbolic Messiah. We know this from other passages because the temple, the tabernacle is a moving temple. The temple, we know what Jesus said in John, uh, John 2.21, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up, referring to himself. 1 Corinthians 3.16, believers are temples of God. Now, Moses leading the Israelites through the wilderness all throughout his time, but when they reached, but they kept falling to faithlessness, they kept rebelling and forgetting God. So finally, the that foundation for the tabernacle was lost. It was invaded by Satan. It's for this reason that God told Moses to choose 12 spies from among the 12 tribes to spy out Canaan. They're on the, the uh, borders of Canaan now, to spy out the land for 40 days. Now they came back, but 10, ten of the spies came back they gave a very lengthy report, they gave uh, realistic reports probably. So it was a dangerous place, we shouldn't go there now, or our children might get killed. But God was very angry. He called these faithless reports because not one word was ever mentioned about God. God was not mentioned. Joshua and Caleb came back and they said, God has given us the land. Because of this, um, God was happy with Joshua and Caleb. But the, the problem was the Israelites, they believed and united with the ten spies, ten faithless ones. So therefore, as a result of this, God's anger was expressed very strongly in Numbers 14, 26 to 35. He said that because you did not believe in me, all your, you will all die in the wilderness. You'll wander in the wilderness for 40 years. You will all die in the wilderness. And only the second generation and Joshua and Caleb will enter Canaan. And so that second course failed. So a third course of wandering in the wilderness to Moses again for 40 years realized the foundation of faith. And the condition was life in the wilderness. But again, 40 years, you see recording Numbers 14, 33, 34. So you can imagine Moses, after this three 40-year courses, he's 120 years old. But at this point, God tells uh, Moses to commission Joshua. He will lead them. He will lead the Israelites into Canaan. When Joshua 1, 2, 5 and 6. Now the foundation of substance is to do with Moses, with Israel, the second generation of Israelites. But as we've seen that God tells Moses to commission Joshua, Joshua is the one who will lead them into Canaan. So you can see there's three courses of this, the first course, second course and third course. Now third course was prolonged to Joshua and Joshua led the second generation of Israelites into Canaan. We look now at Jesus' course. Reverend Samyam Moon states, in exposition of the divine principle, Moses brought the Israelites out of Egypt, led them across the Red Sea, and had them wander through the wilderness 
before entering the promised land of Canaan. This foreshadowed the course on which Jesus would one day lead the people. Jesus would bring them out of lives of sin and lead them through safely across the troubled sea of evil. He would take them through a desert devoid of life-giving water before guiding them into the Garden of Eden of God's promise. Just as a national course to restore Canaan under the leadership of Moses was prolonged as three courses because of the Israelites' faithlessness, the worldwide course to restore Canaan under the leadership of Jesus had to be undertaken three times because of the disbelief of John the Baptist and the people of that day. So God uses a model course in his dispensation and we can see here that uh, Jacob, Jacob worked on a family level. At that time he overcome the angel in Genesis 32-28. It's for this reason God said your name will no longer be called Jacob but Israel. This is the first time the word Israel has ever been mentioned. This is related to Jacob's faith. At this time God worked and succeeded on a family level. Later, Moses, God worked on a national level. And then later, Jesus worked on a world level. But we can see incredible similarities in their courses. There's not much time in this presentation to go into too much detail. There's just the basic points to let us know this. For example, Amos 3.7 says, Surely the Lord God does nothing without revealing his secret to his servants the prophets. In Acts 3.22, Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you from your own people a prophet like me. You must listen to whatever he tells you. A prophet like me uh, means that Jesus will come. Jesus will be a person like Moses, going through a similar course. Even Jesus, in John 5.19, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, the Son can do nothing on His own, but only what He sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, the Son does likewise. How did, God, how did Jesus see God doing things? Jesus saw God doing those things through the prophets before Him. So it means that Jesus had to discover His mission as Messiah. He learned His mission. He learned the uh, the code, if you like, and a model course. We look now at the uh, the worldwide course to restore Canaan. The foundation of faith in this course, the central person was John the Baptist. John the Baptist was a great prophet at that time, prepared to lead the people to meet the Messiah, a prophet wandering in the wilderness. The condition he set was a, his ascetic life, now the foundation of substance has to do with all of Israel uniting with John the Baptist at that time as a foundation for a Messiah. But unfortunately we know even though John the Baptist had an incredible birth, uh, even miracles surrounding his birth, he had an incredible life. People, at least two passages in the Bible where it shows that they asked John the Baptist if he was the Messiah, that's how highly they respected John the Baptist in John 1.19 and Luke 3.15. In John 1.34, John gave a wonderful testimony testifying that Jesus is the Son of God. But despite this, he later denied being Elijah in John 1.21. And this puts John the Baptist at odds with Jesus and Matthew at the end of John the Baptist's life. Uh, John the Baptist asked Jesus in Matthew 11:3 if he was the one, if he was the Messiah. This one question from John the Baptist shows that John the Baptist never followed Jesus in his lifetime. And so this was a tragic end to a great prophet's life of John the Baptist. John the Baptist's mission to lead people to Jesus was vital. However, he did not become a disciple of Jesus and contradicted Jesus when he denied being Elijah. 
John 1 21 then at the end of his life he asked Jesus if he was the Messiah clearly shows that he did not follow Jesus and so the first course ended in failure when John the Baptist failed his mission so therefore the second course Jesus himself has to take up this mission as a central person as John the Baptist this is the reason why Jesus fasted for 40 days and even Paul points out in 1 Corinthians 2.8 that the Lord of glory should not have had to go the path of tribulation now the foundation of substance has to do with Israel uniting with Jesus now Jesus is in a situation now where he's working for the capacity as a central person not as the Messiah so he has to teach people that he is Messiah but people don't normally respect or believe a person who says good things about himself but that was the sad situation Jesus was in he had a very difficult task to, to let people know he was the Messiah we'll come back to this in a moment but let's look now at the temptations the first temptation symbolizes the, the first blessing of individual perfection that God gave to Adam and Eve in this temptation Satan asked Jesus to turn stone uh, bread to, sorry turn stone into bread now stone as we saw has a very important meaning we saw already in the other, earlier on that the uh, stone symbolizes the rock was Christ and the white stone is Christ and John 1 14 refers to Jesus the word made flesh so in other words stone symbolizes spiritual life the temptation was to turn stone into bread to give up his mission give up his mission in favor of just living a physical life ordinary physical life but of course uh, Jesus response was in Matthew 4.4 4, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God second temptation Satan takes Jesus on top of the temple and asks him to throw himself down from there now the temple we saw as a significant meaning uh, John 2.19-21 symbolizes Jesus himself, his status and 1 Corinthians 12 27 said believers are temples of God in other words there can't be a main temple, there can't be a branch temple unless there's a main temple to become a main temple is a parent position in other words it was a the only way a person could lose that status if he fall like Adam and Eve fell and they fell was a sexual fall in other words, this was a sexual temptation uh, for Jesus. And for that reason, uh, Jesus' answer was, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Third temptation, Satan takes Jesus up in a very high mountain and offers him all the kingdoms of the world if he will only bow down and worship him. Jesus' answer was, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and him you only shall you serve Satan couldn't offer all the kingdoms of the world unless he possessed them and he did as a condition of the fall but Satan, but Jesus overcame this temptation so Jesus has to commence or continue his mission from the capacity of a central person and it's for this reason he had to he performed miracles he performed miracles not to not only because it's a nice thing to do because he that's the difficulty he was faced with people would not believe him so he was performing miracles we say in John 10 38 at least if you believe the works if you don't believe me at least believe the works and know that the father is in me that's how desperate Jesus was he had to perform miracles to try to prove he was the Messiah John 9 16 and 24 refers to Jesus as a sinner Jesus was, that's how Jesus was viewed John 8 59 John 
1031, at least two occasions where people tried to stone Jesus. A stoning was a, a death sentence, but he was rescued miraculously. At least two times we see that the situation is so intense that he had to take refuge. Even his disciples did not know where he was. But in John 7, 1, 8, 40, Jesus had to take refuge for his life. So the death of Jesus was not God's will. Only one being wanted Jesus dead, and that was Satan. Even the moment he was born, Satan tried to kill him. And throughout his life, Satan tried to kill Jesus. Because Satan knows Jesus is the one who can take this world back from Satan, back to God. But this situation is no one believing. No one believes Jesus. If, if no one believes, there will be no salvation. So at this point, God has to allow Satan to have Jesus. That's why his death was a, a ransom. But no faith, so he, Satan took the body of Jesus. That's why the death of Jesus is actually a victory for Satan not for God. Jesus' death doesn't make God happy. And we know that it's really a victory for Satan because if Jesus never returned after his resurrection, do you think Christianity would exist? No one would have believed. He, Jesus would have been forgotten. But Jesus did come back and the resurrection, this was the victory for God. But when he came back, he restored the third course he, he resurrected on the earth for 40 days this resurrection period this was a foundation of faith for the third course and the, the disciples who lost faith who abandoned Jesus that they repented and whipped and wept bitterly and really were so sorry but this time they realized they made a big mistake and they completely united with Jesus they could become one with him. They could be one with the spiritual Jesus, but unfortunately, uh, Satan still claimed the area of the physical world. So they could not bring complete salvation. But, nevertheless, they laid a foundation for the second coming of Christ to complete that work at a future date. So therefore, the foundation to receive the Messiah at the second coming of Christ the foundation of faith should be the new John the Baptist figure. Should not be the Messiah himself. Or, or there's a possibility that the new John the Baptist figure may fail, like John, John did. In this case, the second coming of Christ himself may have to go through his difficult course and lay a condition based on the a number 40 period. Now, the foundation of substance is to the Christians uniting with this new John the Baptist figure or second coming of Christ and there's also a risk that the Christians themselves may many of them may may lose faith and so a third Israel may be called as we know the Christians are referred to as the second Israel in the Bible now the national course we saw that uh, Moses he led the Israelites to three courses but Moses could only make a spiritual entrance. Uh, God said to Moses, you will not enter this land. But Moses was pleading with God, let me enter it. You have this whole life for this one mission. But God said, no, you will not enter it. You will see this land, but you will not enter it. But you will commission Joshua, and he will lead the people in. So it's a similar way, Jesus, in the world course, Jesus lived his entire life to bring complete salvation on earth. But then in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus was pleading with God if he would not die. He's not pleading because of human weakness, not at all. Jesus would be happy to die a thousand times if that's the only way to bring salvation. But he knew if he died in that way, he will return to his heavenly Father, live in the world uh, as it is, and live in so much suffering to be undone. He wanted to remain on earth to complete his mission. But God said, no, you will not do this. But the second coming will complete his work.
So just like uh, Joshua is a new person to succeed the mission of Moses, the second coming of Christ will be a new person to complete the mission of Jesus at a future date. So the three courses we see are the national course, but the third course was a prolonged course centered on Joshua and the second generation of Israelites who actually finally entered the land of Canaan. Now the three worldwide courses, John the Baptist failed immediately the first course, but the second and third course led by Jesus, but the third course also is a prolonged course. And this will be prolonged to the new John the Baptist or the second coming of Christ. And the second Israel, Christians, or the third Israel, but they'll lead people into, into Canaan, which means the uh, heavenly kingdom. There's a comparison to the, of the courses, the national course and the world courses. Now, Moses leading the Israelites from Egypt to Canaan, this was an external distance, you know, through the desert. But whereas uh, the Messiah, Jesus, in the second time of Christ, leading people th from the satanic world to the heavenly world, it's an internal distance. But the principles are the same. The principles of Moses leading the Israelites through the desert, or Jesus leading people through the sinfulness of his world, is the same, same principles. We have to overcome Satan and realize the heavenly kingdom on this earth. So in other words, it's a physical distance, or the Messiah's mission is a transformation of our lives, and the transformation of his world, not necessarily from one physical place to another. And so, we're living now at the time of the second coming of Christ. And so we need to learn from the mistakes of the past. From the Messiah is not just, uh, just faith, just believe. And of course we're not earning our salvation. But we need to qualify, qualify, qualify to become the children of God. We knew this by following the model course of the Messiah. Messiah is the one who discovers Satan's secret crime. He understands how Satan has been dominating humanity all throughout the ages. By following the Messiah, we can find a course to separate from Satan and restore our dominion over Satan. So it's not a matter of just believing. It's not enough just to believe. It's not enough. We can't earn our salvation, but we need to qualify. We need to resume our position as children of God. But we, can, we need the Messiah for this. So we live in a great time at this age. So I really recommend you to study Reverend Samya Moon's teachings in the Divine Principle. So thank you for your attendance here in this presentation. Thank you very much.